uh, I'm really glad to to be here and to speaking about to be speaking about this important topic. As most of you know, but perhaps someone who is watching us and is still not a DM member does know, uh, from the very start of DM25, uh, we have been involved in advocating transparency in the sense that uh, the decisions which are made behind closed doors, which are of interest of uh, the public, uh, should be public. And let me remind you that one of the co-founders uh, uh, of DN25, which is not this idiot, but, but another one, as we call ourselves privately, uh, uh, actually is a whistleblower. You know what uh, Yanis Varoufakis did uh, uh, at the beginning, even before DN25 existed, was uh, to record as finance minister the meetings of a very secretive institution uh, of the European Union, the Eurogroup, and he leaked these recordings and all these recordings are published and uh, they made an impact. I mean, one of the impacts is definitely a movement with more than 100,000 members, DM25, uh, but it also launched a debate uh, in which way uh, the most powerful institutions of the European Union work and, uh, uh, well, manipulate uh, our lives. Uh, uh, the recent leaks, uh, the Pandora Papers uh, uh, are definitely uh, important. Uh, they have definitely shed light on some uh, sh shady, dodgy details about uh, the powerful elites of, of today. Uh, uh, but as someone who has been following uh, leaks uh, for, I would say, at least a decade, uh, I might say I must say that we have to look at the uh, at at the Pandora Papers as part of a much bigger picture. I mean, before the Panama Papers, of course, we had uh, before the Pandora Papers, we had the Panama Papers. Before the Panama Papers, uh, we had the Paradise Papers. Uh, what is uh, uh, you know what what is in common with all these leaks is, of course, uh, uh, tax evasion. Uh, and honestly, we didn't really need a lesson that the most rich. Uh, of the world are actually uh, evade, evading uh, paying taxes and putting it on offshore islands and so on. Uh, but still, what this kind of leaks and uh, this kind of collective uh, uh, investigation by journalists and whistleblowers, uh, what it achieves is that people like us, uh, people in governments, political parties, movements, uh, have tools uh, to, 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 to put political pressure and uh, to change uh, politics today. Uh, but I think it would be insufficient, it wouldn't be fair to talk about uh, the Pandora Papers uh, without mentioning, uh, uh, well, uh, someone who started actually this trend of leaking important uh, uh, material, uh, whether it is war crimes, corruption, tax evasion, killing, torture, spying, surveillance, uh, one of the first was, of course, WikiLeaks and Julian Assange, uh, who actually started uh, precisely with this kind of method that you bring journalists on board. Like now, similarly in the uh, Pandora Papers, you have uh, The Guardian, Washington Post, and many others who work together and then published at the same time and so on. Uh, this, was, this is something what WikiLeaks was already doing uh, until, of course, uh, uh, because of fear, corruption, uh, some of the media turned the back to WikiLeaks and also Julian Assange. And actually, some of them actually participated in the character assassination. Uh, and a step further, and then I conclude, uh, I think this, the Pandora Papers would be incomplete without mentioning not only WikiLeaks, but also other whistleblowers. Uh, Chelsea Manning, who revealed United States war crimes. Edward Snowden, who revealed uh, uh, a massive surveillance uh, a program of the United States and that so-called deep state, uh, but also Daniel Hale, who revealed uh, the drone warfare of the United States. And when you put all of this together, Pandora Papers, Panama Papers, Paradise Papers, WikiLeaks, Daniel Hale, Edward Snowden, uh, uh, Julian Assange and Chelsea Manning and many others, you will really get a picture of how our world is functioning today. And I think it's definitely not enough to just propose progressive taxation, as we can hear, tax the rich, tax the rich, taxes, 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 blah, blah, blah. I think it's definitely not enough uh, for a movement like DM25, but also for any other progressive movement. I think what when we have this whole picture in mind, what we have to work on hard, day by day, night by night, is systemic change. Uh, because taxation will definitely not solve the problem. 
There will always be another island where Djukanovic, Tony Blair, Jeff Bezos, Elon Musk, or someone else can put their money there. Uh, uh, and it's definitely not going, to, not going to change the very system which is based on extraction, exploitation, and expansion. I stop here and I'm looking forward to what others have to say. Thanks, Rechko. Baral, Baral Madra. Thank you, Mera. Uh, I think we should add uh, uh, another profile from Turkey to whistleblowers. And uh, he, is, um, he is now a very famous whistleblower, uh, but he is actually a mafia bo boss. Uh, now he is living in one of the Arab countries. For two months, he sent videos to the uh, large public through social media, of course, uh, about the most mysterious uh, affairs uh, that happened in Turkey since 20 years and even before. So um, he, he really opened uh, the Pandora box before the big Pandora box in Turkey, I think. And now uh, the Turkish public uh, looks at him as a hero because uh, many, many uh, mysterious uh, political issues uh, now uh, very clear after he really, um, um, he really talked about these uh, issues uh, with uh, documents actually. And uh, I think social media played a very uh, positive role in the, in this issue uh, because uh, of uh, in Turkey since uh, maybe uh, I don't know since the 90s uh, was very dark for us and uh, among other problems uh, which are really breathtaking in Turkey. Uh, uh, suddenly these uh, Pandora papers uh, came to the agenda, but it was not a surprise because all the, uh, most of the cases and profiles mentioned in, uh, in these documents were already a common knowledge for us. We knew who was uh, making tax evasion or who was um, sending black money and uh, it was uh, it was open uh, to uh, to most of the uh, I mean through most of the journalistic uh, journalistic work. Uh, so it wasn't a surprise. And uh, now Parliament is discussing uh, yeah. this issue. Uh, True, uh, because uh, Mr. Garopailan uh, opened a question. He is a HDP party member, and uh, probably uh, this week it will it will be discussed in the parliament. Until now, we didn't hear anything from the uh, ruling power uh, from the government about Pandora Papers. They didn't respond. Uh, only the uh, opposition party uh, leaders are uh, talking about it in the televisions and in the social media. Yes. But uh, today, uh, probably you will know that uh, the problem in Turkey is uh, USD, dollar and AU are really uh, in a, a shock uh, people because uh, one dollar is ten lira now. This is the this is the problem in Turkey, not the Pandora Papers. The money is already stolen, and uh, it can, it will not come back. Thank you, Beral, for giving us the perspective from Turkey. Would anyone else like to jump in to give some more context to the topic about whistleblowing in your countries? Or anyone else got any specific comments? thinking about it. Yanis. Thank you, Maren. What do you do when all power is concentrated in the 1% of the 1% of the population 
who control the corporations and the state, uh, who control our data, who wage uh, genocidal wars, who um, ensure that uh, the planet remains on the trajectory towards uh, climate, not emergency, but catastrophe, uh, who will demonize anyone who um, threatens with uh, um, you know, the kind of information that the public could use in order to gain a little bit, a little bit of autonomy from this global oligarchy. Uh, I think Julian Assange had the right answer a long, long time ago, even before he introduced WikiLeaks, which is um, to turn a mirror onto the face of the big brother oligarchy uh, and to reveal their secrets. Uh, we live in a world where you, me, all of us um, are made of glass. We are totally transparent. You know, the NSA, uh, the, the CIA, Google, Amazon, even, even tiny little outfits that have the money to buy an Israeli app know everything about us. Um, and, and they don't even have the, uh, the self-restraint to keep it from us that they know about us. You know, Google tells me every time that, you know, oh, by the way, uh, last year, this very moment, you were doing this. You were scratching your head, um, talking to your wife or whatever, right? Um, Julian's idea was really very simple. To make it publicly available, so that everybody knows what they know <laughs> and what they've been up to. And for that, they're killing him in Belmarsh prison. For that, um, they tortured Chelsea Manning uh, for years on end. Absolute torture. Um, this is, uh, you know, it's going to go, go down in history as uh, a liberal democracy willingly, knowingly, and purposely torturing one of its citizens day in, day out, day in, day out. They are criminals. We're looking at you folks, the so-called liberal Democrats, parading in front of Congresses and cameras and so on, uh, speaking the language of uh, Voltaire, of Rousseau, of John Locke, of um, you know, Adam Smith, when in reality you are nothing but outright criminals and torturers. That's what you are in the interests of creating a monopoly, not in the interest of capitalism or the market, not even that, in the interest of keeping all the power in your filthy, very few hands. This is what you've been up to. And we know that whistleblowers uh, are going to be persecuted. Uh, and even worse than killed, what they're doing to Julian as we speak is worse than, worse than murder after all those years. Uh, the, the, the assassination of character. Rem remember that even our comrades in the United Kingdom, in Sweden and so on, were convinced that um, Julian was a, rap a rapist, that um, you know, he deserved to, to burn in hell, and all that so that they wouldn't, so that they would forget that it was he that allowed them to know of the crimes perpetrated by the British government and the American government and other governments uh, in their name, in Afghanistan and in Iraq and elsewhere. Um, of course, we are talking, we have a tendency to talk, and Beral, we owe a debt of gratitude to Beral, because uh, um, you know, we live in, a, in an imperialistic, um, Western-dominated, white, male imperium. So even the whistleblowers that we talk about are white and male, <laughs> like Julian. That's not against Julian, but there are whistleblowers and very courageous people in Turkey, in Iraq, in Syria, in Nigeria, in Ghana, in China, in India, in Hong Kong, in, in, you know, the, 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 in Latin America, in the developed world that we don't even know about. People who have blown the whistle and who have just been killed and buried, along with their families sometimes. And we don't even know about the names. So it's it's important to place it in its broader context. This is war. It is not peace. It's not democracy. It's war. It's war against 
exorbitant power. And whistleblowers are these tiny specks of light that uh, provide hope that this war has not been lost for humanity. In Greece, recently, our party, Mera 25, Dim 25's electoral wing, we stood by one of those uh, whistleblowers, Maria Efimova, from Malta, who was um, hounded all the way to Crete, where she resides. The European Union itself is implicit and complicit in attempts to have her or her husband extradited, uh, persecuted, and so on. Uh, make no mistake, Brussels, the European Union, the British government, the American government, the Greek government, the German government, the, the French government, you are not liberals. You are part of the problem. You are part of the oligarchy that is destroying liberty in the name of liberty, that is um, causing war in the name of peaceful coexistence, uh, destroying the planet in the name of the green transition. Whistleblowers are the only hope we have that this uh, uh, mind-numbing asymmetry of power can be redressed. Thank you, Yanis. Um, okay, let me put something perhaps to all of you, if no one's putting their hand up yet, to, to add a comment. Um, last week, the, the Pandora papers were sort of knocked out of the headlines by this former product manager at Facebook who went uh, public about how the social media giant puts uh, profit before people and hurts children and, uh, and so on in terms of like uh, psychological development. Um, Frances Haugen is her name. Now, there was some commentary I read on, on Jonathan's Cook, Jonathan Cook's blog uh, that, that, this is, that she's not a real whistleblower at all. And the fact that the, the Democratic Party is celebrating her right now and, and she's coming down in favor of uh, uh, more censorship and, 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 not, and doesn't want to break up Facebook demonstrates that she's not a whistleblower at all. Um, whereas people like Manning and, and Snowden and Assange, who challenged the very basis of uh, how, we, how the powerful run the world are, are you know, terrible things happen to them and they're thrown into dark dungeons and exiled and so on so what would you guys say to that would you would you agree with jonathan cook or how would you interpret it rosemary i would agree with jonathan cook i think it's very interesting you see it all over the place that when they finally get to expose the treatment of children in catholic detention centers in Ireland, that's when you suddenly get all the information about what really went on there for years. So when you get to a tipping point, you'll suddenly find there are a whole load of people who are willing to come out and tell you things you never thought you'd hear from such people. But they do things like Hagen has done. They, they end up concluding that the state's got to get a grip on uh, the internet and make damn sure that this sort of mess, you know, doesn't carry on. And uh, she was being welcomed to the club of other people who have um, denounced Silicon Valley from within Silicon Valley. But I'm not all saying that they're in some vast plot just to calculate how much to give us, but I am saying that we're being given a sliding scale of whistleblowing now, as if that were the issue, and really it isn't the issue. There is an issue here of us and them. The thing that everybody fears is that ordinary people will begin to understand how little they are cared about and what is being done to them. And that you are not allowed to say. And you're not allowed to say that it's the system that's doing it. The people who say that, the people who get closest to saying that, they are suffering terrible, long jail sentences, deaths, torture, Goodness knows what. We need to know that that is what underpins this issue, because otherwise we will get confused by a lot of people who come out and give you everything that you wouldn't have thought you'd ever hear from anyone. And yet they don't give you the crucial analysis and the crucial implications of that. There was a marvelous article in The Guardian explaining the sliding scale of whistleblowers on Hagen's subject. And how really um, the most uh, uh, interesting ones were the ones who were unsure they wanted to participate in 
that particular, uh, uh, you know, celebrity uh, annunciation of uh, announcement of knowledge, who thought that it was more important to work with the workers, to work with users, to get them to understand the issues involved. So I do think there's something we have to ask ourselves about when we, what we do with this stuff and when we do it. Thank you, Rosemary. Any other comments? And Rosemary makes an important point. What, what do we do with this stuff when it's out there? How can these revelations make more of an impact? Johannes, Johannes Fair. Thanks, Maran. Um, thanks also for what has already been said, which uh, really um, speaks very close to, to me. So I don't have to, uh, I don't want to add uh, anything, you know, I want to emphasize that and also add one um, story that I wanted to share with you since DM25 has been um, very active on um, helping whistleblowers as you, they have already been mentioned now. I wanted to mention someone else. Um, uh, this person is called Esteban Servat, um, and I'm going to read a short article uh, or a short paragraph, so um, I make no mistake in who he is. Um, in March 2018, using nothing more than a Facebook page and a rudimentary website, a 33-year-old Argentina-American biologist named Esteban Servat launched a protest that has mobilized tens of thousands of people in Argentina. Servat published a secret uh, Argentine government study of the event environmental effects of tracking in the mountainous region of Mendoza, a report that had been provided to him by a whistleblower inside the government of President Maurizio Macri. Uh, the study revealed that the Macri administration knew about the contamination of aquifers due to fracking operations, but lied to the public about the scope of the risk. Um, and this person, Esteban, um, how do I get to know him? He just came to one of our DSC, DM Spontaneous Collective, our local groups um, in Berlin uh, to one of our meetings and introduced himself and told his story. And it was uh, yeah, silent afterwards in our group because we couldn't really believe what he was saying. Um, but I think it was very good for DM as an organization that he uh, thought that we are a group where, because he had to um, leave Argentina and um, uh, seek refuge in, in Germany that he could come to. And we tried, of course, to help him a little bit um, in our kind of um, uh, little ways as a group, how, how you can help a person. Um, and he has later on also um, joined our protest that we were um, uh, yeah, organizing in support of Julian Assange. Um, and I think this is a way of um, how we all can try to, you know, help and support uh, uh, whistleblowers that are under attack, uh, that are under threat from the, the people in power. Um, and I think our whistleblower fund uh, supporting Maria Efimova is, of course, one example, but also uh, I think everyone uh, of us can uh, try to help uh, people that are attacked um, and that need, it, need to be protected. Um, something else I wanted to mention uh, in the in terms of the comment on the Pandora Papers, I read a little bit more about the topic today, and I actually tried to find out, so what... What, what about my country? Which politician was involved? Um, I didn't really get so far. And when I was thinking and trying to, you know, go to as close as I could to the actual original data and uh, search myself, I was missing something that WikiLeaks provided to us, which is full transparency. Of course, media can make stories about it. But nowadays, these leaks they are not real leaks because you don't get the original documents. You get uh, what journalists write about it, which is great, of course, summarize, you know, um, try to put a story together, that's great. But I think something else that we really need to emphasize always and try to put pressure on is that we also can have a look into the original documents um, 
like we uh, published them when we published the EuroLeaks documents. Thank you, Johannes. And uh, important point there, the tension between just dumping everything out there or curating it. I, I know it's something that we ran into with, uh, with our EuroLeaks um, leak. I would encourage everybody to check that out, euroleaks.dm25.org. I think it's, it was quite an innovative use of web technologies to have a good story, but also uh, have all the content there for people to search and, and peruse. Anybody else have any comments? Judith, Judith Mayer. Just a quick note, because uh, Jonas said you can't actually access um, these leaks directly. Yes, that's true, of course. Um, but um, what most newsletter uh, newspapers don't tell you, and which is in fact possible, is to go to the source, um, this uh, consortium of um, um, a jour a journalistic organization, the ICIJ, um, which ha has been leaking the, uh, well, they're not the ones who leak, but uh, they have been organizing uh, this whole thing with the Pandora Papers and before the Panama Papers and so on and so on. Uh, and if you go to their website, the ICIJ website, uh, you can in fact uh, uh, search a database of which politicians, uh, industrialists, and other people from your country uh, have been um, involved in any of these uh, previous leaks. Not the Pandora leaks yet, I'm hoping they will add it, um, but uh, the previous ones have been accessed, uh, indexed uh, by country and so on, and you can um, see in much more detail than the newspapers are likely to cover it. You can do your own research on who is involved in which way and how. Thank you, Judith. Anyone else? Some discussion in our chat here about who benefits from the leaks and whether that matters. Any other comments from anybody? Maya, Maya. Maya, go for it, Maya. Yeah, well, uh, whenever we, we have this topic of, uh, of leaks, uh, I always think of uh, what we can do to actually protect uh, the whistleblowers because uh, you have to, of course, uh, see uh, all the countries that uh, have really, really bad corruption have a problem to protect people that are uh, uh, leaking uh, things that are concerning uh, this corruption. Uh, and of course, uh, we on the Balkans have, have these kinds of issues all the time. Uh, and now with the Pandora Papers, uh, we were on the list of, uh, of uh, corrupted um, you know, uh, people, we had a lot of uh, people that uh, were revealed uh, in the Pandora Papers and some of them also the president of Montenegro that Srećko mentioned, uh, Milo Djukanovic, and also our Minister of Finance, Sini Shamali. It was all over the papers uh, for a couple of days. Everybody was talking about it. Of course, all the social media were full of it. Uh, like, okay, they're going down. Now we have proof. Uh, there are leaks that are really are proofs of the corruption, uh, but nothing actually happened. Of course, our president, uh, Vucic, uh, he, uh, he just said that it's not true, that uh, uh, th these are not uh, actual papers, that it's always, uh, you know, the opposition uh, that uh, is leaking these kinds of papers, blah, blah, blah. And of course, all of this, these uh, fake news that these kinds of governments are always perpetuating the media. So then I was thinking, uh, because of course we had the WikiLeaks on our territory, we had this famous uh, uh, worker uh, that uh, some of you maybe know about uh, that uh, leaked uh, corruption uh, from a uh, um, uh, big uh, arms company uh, factory called Krušik. Uh, his name was, uh, is Alexander Obradovich and he was uh, arrested and in jail for uh, leaking uh, documents that were uh, that were also in, uh, where we had also the involvement of the Minister uh, of Defense at that time. Uh, and uh, he was of course arrested and after a petition of 25,000 I think signatures, uh, uh, he was released but of course uh, not, uh, he did never, uh, never got his job back uh, and he's just still doesn't have a job. Uh, so then I, I was really thinking, how can we uh, encourage someone in countries uh, like my country and like a lot of countries uh, on the Balkans uh, to actually be a whistleblower when we cannot uh, in any way protect whistleblowers? And paradoxically, uh, when I was talking uh, to Renata Vila, she told me that Serbia actually has a really good whistleblower law on paper 
but we never used it. When you see it on paper, it uh, it says all of these things that, of course, protecting the whistleblowers, but it's not. Ne it just never happens. Uh, and of course, we have the problem of media. What? How can we do all of these things in a country that that doesn't have free media? So I'm just interested. Uh, and maybe we can talk a little bit about it. How can we actually help uh, whistleblowers all around the world, but also having in mind the specific countries that these leaks are coming uh, from? Thank you. Maya, does anyone have any concrete responses, suggestions to Maya's question? What can we do to support whistleblowers around the world more than what we're already doing? What can the people out there do, apart from just join DM25? Anything? Any thoughts? I think Srechko, Srechko. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, the, there are many organizations out there which are dealing with uh, the protection of whistleblowers. Uh, besides DM25, uh, there is Courage Foundation, uh, then there is the Freedom of Press Foundation. Uh, uh, there are many others which were either started by former whistleblowers or by lawyers or by those people who actually know how to help whistleblowers. Unfortunately, what we have seen is that those uh, who, who, who went into the biggest risk uh, also had the biggest sacrifice. Uh, I mean, from Julian Assange to Daniel Hale now, Chelsea Manning, who was tortured, uh, uh, to Edward Snowden, who cannot return to the United States. Uh, so there is always a risk involved. Uh, 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 but that's why I think, you know, to come back to some things people here already mentioned, is that I don't think, you know, the basic principle of whistleblowing uh, uh, was uh, nicely expressed precisely by Julian uh, when he said that uh, if wars can be started by lies, uh, peace can be achieved by truth. Uh, uh, well, I think what we have to do is to go a step further and to actually deconstruct the fetishization of truth. Uh, 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 this is something also I think connects to what Rosemary was had has been saying, you know, I don't think that, you know, as many good stories you have, or journalists summarizing the leaks, uh, or even a politician, you have seen what happened in Czech Republic, uh, where the prime minister who was actually campaigning uh, uh, on tax reform uh, uh, was revealed in Pandora uh, uh, papers and actually lost the re-election. So actually, you can see a direct effect already these days. But I still think this is also not enough. I don't think that telling the truth or revealing the dirty secrets about tax evasion, war crimes, it's definitely not enough. Look what WikiLeaks revealed since collateral murder uh, uh, and revealing the war crimes in Iraq or Afghanistan. Who ended up in prison? Uh, you know, what about the war criminals themselves? Uh, uh, who was in court? You know, who was uh, uh, accused? Uh, uh, who had any kind of effect uh, because of the, of, of the leaks? Uh, they're still in power, you know, the same faces, the same people uh, who were saying that we have to drone or assassinate Assange. Some of them are actually presidents today. Uh, uh, so I think, you know, this brings me to a crucial conclusion. You know, if the truth is not enough, if we are witnessing what Noam Chomsky is calling manufacturing consent, and if immediately after Pandora Papers, we will be already occupied by another scandal or whatever, uh, uh, then the question is, you know, what do we do? And I think that the crucial uh, step we can do is actually to organize and mobilize on the one hand to protect the whistleblowers themselves, but without building up social movements, uh, which can use the truth, which can use the information either, uh, not just in the sense of putting political pressure or asking someone to resign, uh, but in the sense of systemic change. I think that's the most important thing, because if just a politician resigns, and then this, you know, former prime minister, prime minister becomes a president and then installs another one to become a prime minister, which happens in many countries. Or they are like in the case of Austria now resigning, but still, you know, governing actually from the shadow, then not many things change. And then in this sense, the, the revelations themselves become a mean actually for everything uh, to change, but everything to stay the same. So I think what is, what is definitely necessary is besides protecting whistleblowers, is to organize and mobilize uh, and not to fetishize, fetishize truth or revelations by themselves. I think the revelations are just the first step and the rest depends on us. It depends on you. 
Well said, Srichko, and there's a comment uh, in the chat that, that relates to what you said. Uh, I'm shocked that most people don't care about any of these leaks, says Lelinsky. Um, by my count, there's only been, uh, well, I think fewer than 10 convictions resulting from the previous Panama Papers and the Paradise Papers. So if everything's just going to stay the same, what concretely can we do? I mean, Srichko says develop social movements. Do, does anybody else have any other thoughts about this. I quote the New York Times when they, they said about these uh, latest revelations that it's, it's wearying to hear this. I mean, <laughs> it's unbelievable to say that about these kinds of revelations about the powerful, that people are just tired already just to hear about it. How do we make people care? How do we connect it with impact? Well, you know, uh, uh, Melanie, if I, if I can have the floor. Go. They, they have a point about this. You know, if you keep telling people out there, oh, you know, the oligarchy, they've stashed trillions and trillions away in the Cayman Islands. After a while, they get desensitized by this. Uh, you're not offering him them a way out. You're not telling them what they can do to change, what it means for them to begin with. Um, so we need to do two things. Firstly, to explain to them that um, their wealth is your poverty. Their wealth is the reason why you can't go to, to sleep at night with a, you know, with a clear head, uh, and why you know you have sleepless nights worrying about, uh, you know, your health insurance, worrying about you know your, your kids' education, worrying about the climate change, worrying worrying about all the disasters that uh, that, that you worry about. Um, there is a direct link between uh, the height of the stash of dollars and yen and euros and so on that they have uh, put away and your woes that's the first thing that's all enough second thing is you have to build them option and this is why let's 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 be we don't things. we do not need more zoom groups uh, in like us now uh, we need uh, political action and we need uh, people to have an, op an option when it comes to organizing their neighborhoods in, in, their, in, in their regions, in their countries, in their continents and also have to give them something to vote for in elections and that's what we're doing here at the M25. Right and on that note perhaps Amir would like to come in to talk about what we're doing in terms of transparency proposals and the, the green paper that's currently making the rounds within DM25 and how people out there, out there can help contribute to it. Go. Okay. Yeah, absolutely. Thanks, Mehran. Um, and on this, on this point, you know, the uh, DM25's policy positions are developed from the grassroots up and on transparency issues. Uh, we, in fact, have a green paper and the link will be coming to uh, the audience now on the chat. Um, we're touching everything from casting light into EU institutions looking at political party funding, monitoring and disclosure, of course, uh, looking at the issues related to the revolving doors of the EU Commission, uh, unmasking lobbying and expert, so quote unquote, expert groups that exist that push certain agendas, of course, um, and, 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 and we, uh, you know, that policy paper um, is available for the members of the public to view. And as part of our policy update process, of course, we're going to be uh, making some changes to it. And if any members are, want to get involved, uh, please uh, get in touch with us at volunteer.dm25.org. And we'd be happy to get um, people who want to get active on this issue to work on the policy positions of the, mem of the movement. Thanks. Thank you, Amir, for detailing that. Any other comments, thoughts, anecdotes, responses to anything you've heard so far? thinking. Okay. Well, in that case, we can wrap it up for today. I think a, a lot has been said. And all the links that uh, we've discussed here um, are in the chat, including uh, the, to the green paper that Amir just uh, mentioned. Again, the email address to get in touch with us and, and be part of this, uh, creating these proposals that we will take to the ballot box in future elections is volunteer at dm25.org and the web address dm25.org slash join. Thank you very much for watching and see you again 
same time, same place, two weeks from now. Oh, sorry. I, I, you know, last minute. I'm really sorry. I thought it was Ooh, one hour after. That's really <laughs> last minute. <laughs> okay. So I just wrapped it up. And now here's Renata. And we're uh, still live. We're and still we're still live. live. And we're, we're, that's our whistleblowing expert who's, who's crashed in at the last moment. So that's fantastic. Totally unscripted. Renata, why don't you have the floor just to discuss uh, whistleblowing and more importantly, what can be done, A, to protect whistleblowers and yes. B, to make sure that revelations actually have an impact because I don't think that uh, the, even the latest Pandora Papers leak is, uh, is connecting with people on the ground and changing well, anything. Well, uh, actually, Go. something very perverse is happening, and it is uh, the separation of good whistleblowers with bad whistleblowers, and whistleblowers that are celebrated by media, and whist whistleblowers that are like thrown under the bus. And the closer you uh, touch the interest of empire, basically, the closer you touch the really powerful they you're dead you're burned you know yeah they're they're like uh in the case of julian assange um clear you know loud and clear to the messenger and to the message and and to the whistleblower um torture and infliction of brutal treatment to some all the whistleblowers i don't want to say that whistleblowing is not great it's great but it's different treatment by the forces that we that the forces that we should be paying an eye on, you know, like the press, mainstream media, uh, organizations that um, enable a culture of censorship and a culture of cancellation, basically, and 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 and, and that refuse to amplify uh, very relevant messages while amplifying other messages that are convenient to the present narrative. Uh, what can we do? I think that uh, the problem goes deeper and we need that first, uh, we need to um, go back to the very burdensome task of uh, rescuing public, public media, public interest media. Uh, second, we need to rescue political, the political, uh, and by rescuing the political, I mean joining uh, initiatives like DiEM, right? Because uh, the, 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 the system is so rotten that even if the message is so loud, as, such as the, you know, everything that we saw before our eyes unfolding the, of the tragedy of Afghanistan, uh, the, the reward that you get is not the Nobel Prize, is, uh, is uh, even that attempts at your assassination at the heart, in, in the heart of London, silenced by the mainstream media and uh, demonization, massive active demonization uh, before the, the um, I mean, using uh, actual public media like uh, institutions like B the BBC. So uh, the message is like, we really need to cultivate critical thinking, get engaged in, in politics and the political, put public, the rescue of public media and public interest media at the core of the agenda and, and stop this division that some whistleblowers are nice and some uh, whistleblowers are not. Because whistleblowing, the act of elevating alerts about the powerful, is 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 uh, part of our uh, of free speech. It's a part of our rights, and we need to defend it regardless we, if we like the message or we do not like the message. If we like the messenger or we do not like the messenger. And, and we need to push uh, for those, uh, uh, not to fall into the temptation of uh, getting into too much into the messenger. They should be protected and celebrated because they are exercising a right, but we should get into the message and what, what that message is uncovering and getting into the political task of fixing uh, uh, the, the parts of the system that are broken or simply replacing that system that is exposed by the whistleblower. In the case of Facebook, I would say like, uh, it's time to get rid of. In the case of uh, the, the massive abuse uncovered by Julian, I would say uh, it is structural and is global. And, and in this case in particular, saving the messenger from this brutal abuse is 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 now is not a matter of choice; it's a matter of principle, and we should all be rallying behind. I, I guess that the stress code is shared that we will be like, 
uh, uh, next week on the 22nd in London at the Belmarsh Tribunal by the Progressive International, and we will tell you more about it. And sorry about taking too much of your time, but I was at work and I really wanted to come and convey this message. All right, that's brilliant. Thank you so much uh, for joining. That was our epilogue, our encore. And I will not repeat the uh, the sign off that I, <laughs> that I gave you guys just before Renata joined. But um, thank you for joining, and uh, 